Hello everyone, welcome to the video tutorial series where we explain on how to fully utilize the features and functionalities of the Department of Commerce Electronic Certificate of Origin system. In this particular video, I will be showing you how to register your company with the system so you can proceed to log in and access its full features. If you're already an exporter with the Department of Commerce, then continue to watch this video as I will guide you through the registration process. But if you're a new exporter and does not have a Department of Commerce issued DCOMR number, please go ahead and skip this video and move on to the next one where I will be explaining the registration process with the Electronic Certificate of Origin system for brand new exporters. So without further ado, let's get started. And once again, I would like to remind you of the fact that this video is for current exporters with the Department of Commerce. Now, as you can see on the right side of our screen is where we have the login portal where we enter our email and our password. But at the moment, we do not have an account. So let's go ahead and make ourselves one. In order to do so, as you can see on the left side of the screen, we have a join with us button. So let's go ahead and click that. This will direct us to the first page in our registration process. And in order to assist with our registration process, we have provided you a couple of helpful links. We have provided you a link to MacMap, the Indian Trade Portal, the Pakistan Trade Portal, as well as the Sri Lankan Department of Commerce. So now let me go ahead and enter my eight digit HS code. As you can see, the, the text box will automatically add in the dots to my HS code to make it adhere to the correct format. Now all I have to do is select my destination and my agreement. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will select India to be my destination. And for the agreement, I will go ahead and select the Indo-Sri Lankan Free Trade Agreement, the ISFTA. With these selected, let's go ahead and click Next. Now, this is where we create an account and add our account details. So let me go ahead and give my user a full name and a contact number. And now I will be entering the email and the password. Now make sure to remember these two very carefully as this is what you will be using to log in to the electronic certificate of origin portal. So let me go ahead and type in my email. And when I go to my password, it will give me a tooltip which essentially explains what needs to be within the password itself. So we need at least eight characters, one number, one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and a special character. So let me go ahead and put in a password that fulfills this requirement. Right, with that in mind, since I'm an exporter that's already registered with the Department of Commerce, I have a DCOM R number. So let me go ahead and insert that as well. Now, as you can see, the DCOMA number is in fact a five digit number, but there may be an instance where your DCOMA number may contain maybe two or three digits like this. So in order to ensure that this adheres to the five number format, all you have to do is go to the beginning of the number and add two zeros to make it into the five digit format. This is essential to ensure that the validation happens with our system in the backend. So something that is worth noting. And also on the right side, you can enter your registration date as an optional field. Now, all I have to do is go ahead and tick this checkbox where I essentially agree to the fact that all the information that I provided is correct to the best of your knowledge. And the fact that if there is any misinformation provided, this account will be liable to cancellation by the Department of Commerce. So let's go ahead and save our details. As you can see, my DCOMR number has synced with the backend details and it has filled in the details of my company and my business registration number. My company name is given with my BR. So all I have to do is fill in the rest of my business registration details now. So let's go ahead and do so. The business type I have will, I, from a choice between manufacturer, exporter and trader, I will go ahead and select exporter and I will give my business an address as well.
Now I need to go ahead and enter my taxpayer identification number, the TIN number, as well as my VAT number. With that completed, now I have to go ahead and upload the relevant documentation for these. So let me go ahead and click the BR certificate, the plus icon, and it will guide, it will tell me to go ahead and upload the document. So let me click upload. And as you can see, I have the BR certificate right here. So let me go ahead and select that and confirm. And it has uploaded my BR certificate. I will go ahead and do the same for the TIN certificate. As well as the VAT. Now, if you if you have a form one uh, per your requirements, you can go ahead and upload this as well. So now with all the documents uploaded, let's go ahead and click on the next step. As you can see, it has already filled in the product details that we uh, put in at the beginning, the HS code, the destination and the agreement. So let's go ahead and enter our other product details. So the product name I'm going to give our product will be women woven jacket, which is clearly an apparel product. So we need to go ahead and select a product category and a subcategory. The product category for an apparel will be non holy and the product subcategory will be a choice between these. So in this particular case, it will be other. Now, as you can see, when you select non holy products as your category, you are given the option to upload a cost statement. Now, if you already have a Department of Commerce approved cost statement, it can be uploaded here. And it is also worth noting that if you are concerned about the security of your private information, you can go ahead and password protect this document that you upload as well. But also do remember that once this registration is completed, to go ahead and send your password details to the Department of Commerce so they can view your uploaded cost statement. Now, before I do go ahead and upload my DOC approved cost statement, let's go ahead and select holy products from the category. Now, as you can see, the prompt to upload the cost statement is no longer available to you because holy products do not require a cost statement. It requires an affidavit. So with that in mind, let's go back to non-holy product. And secondly, it's also worth noting that if you do not have a department approved cost statement or an affidavit, you can, once this registration is completed and when you get access to the electronic certificate of origin system, you can go ahead and apply for a cost statement and an affidavit per your requirements. And we have a separate video explaining these processes to you later down the line. So let's go ahead and upload our cost statement. Right, with the documents uploaded, I will go ahead and click on next. And now I am given the option to enter my company management details, where I can enter the details of my chairman, my managing director and the director details of my company. So let's go ahead and click next. Uh, I will click on the plus icon. And now I will enter the company details of one of my members, who I'm going to call Jane Doe who will be the chairman of my company. And now I am given the option to select the nationality. Now it can either be Sri Lankan or foreign. If it is a foreign individual, I will go ahead and select other. And when I do go ahead and select other, I am given the option to upload a passport. And once passport is selected, as you can see, the upload button for the passport has appeared and I can go ahead and type my passport number right here. However, if the person is a Sri Lankan, then you are actually given three options. You can either enter your NIC details, your passport or your driver's license. Now, if you do click, uh, click on the NIC here instead, as you can see, the upload button will now ask you for an NIC front image and an NIC back image. If you go ahead and select driver's license, the upload button will now ask you for a driver's license image. For the chairman Jane Doe that I'm creating, I'm gonna go ahead and select the NIC number. And here I will enter the NIC number for my particular user. And an email address. 
and a mobile phone and a landline number and you can enter your residence address as an optional feature so let me go ahead and upload my NIC front and we'll do the same for the NIC back now click on save details now as you can see the details of my chairman has been saved now I can go ahead and click the plus button and add, add more details about my directors and managing directors and so on. You can add up to five people in the company management details page to your preference. But for, for the demonstration purpose, I'm just going to add one person and move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and click next. And now I need to go ahead and enter the details of the contact person. This will be the person the DOC will be contacting if there's any kind of issues or uh, other needs arise. So let me go ahead and create a contact person. I'm going to give him the designation of a director. And I'm going to select the nationality as Sri Lankan. But this time, instead of an NIC, let me go ahead and select passport. So let me go ahead and enter a password number and an email and a mobile number for this individual as well as a landline number. So let me go ahead and upload my passport image. And now it directs me to enter the details of the authorized person. Now the authorized person will be the one who will be signing the certificates of origin in your company. So let me go ahead and create this person as well. And once again, I'm going to select Sri Lankan as a nationality, but for this person, let me go ahead and choose driver's license. And I will enter the driver's license of this particular individual and an email address. A mobile number as well as a landline number. You can enter a fax number as optional. So now let me go ahead and upload my driving license. And also, since this is the person who is authorized to sign your certificates of origin, you need to upload their digital signature as well. So let me go ahead and do exactly that. Right. So with these details filled, let's go ahead and click on save details. Right. So now we are directed to this page where we will be uploading the factory details and any other kind of special document. Now it is worth noting that the factory details page will in fact change depending on the product category and the subcategory that you have selected. To give you an example, if you select uh, your product category as holy and select spices and allied product as your subcategory, then a bunch of special document uploads are necessary and it will appear in the bottom of this page. And let me show you a screenshot of what this may look like. So if you select spices, your factory details page will have an optional list of documents that you need to upload due to the subcategory that you have selected. So in this case, you will have to upload suppliers list, warehouse details, auditor report, bank letter, bank facility and other documents. To give you another example, if you choose holy products as your category, an edible fish as your subcategory, then these kind of special documents will need to be uploaded where you will need to upload the registration certificate and other documents. But in our particular demonstration, the only things we need to upload uh, are the factory details, the production flowchart and any other relevant documents since a subcategory we have selected is other. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So let me go ahead and upload my factory details, which I have saved here in the form of a PDF. And let me do the same for my production flowchart. 
and then I have some other documents. Now, if you go ahead and click on uh, hover over the other documents, it actually gives you a tool tip of what kind of documents you can actually upload. So it could be documents relating to the EDB, the BOI, or any kind of no objection letters that you may have gotten from a producer. So for this particular purpose, I actually have an export registration document that I can upload. So with these three documents uploaded, let me go ahead and click save details. And this essentially completes my registration process. And now I will be directed to the login screen. Now let's go ahead and log into the system using the email and the password we entered in the account creation process. So let me go ahead and type in the email as well as the password. And now let me go ahead and click login. As you can see, it directs us to the exporter dashboard. And through the exporter dashboard, you will get access to a range of services and features of the certificate of origin system, ranging from applying to affidavits, cost statements, REX registration, ISFTA approval quota, and so on. Each of these processes will be explained in detail in our other videos of this series. And please do note that if you need further information, go ahead and refer to the user manuals that are created as they will provide an in-depth explanation into each of the steps of the registration process. This concludes the registration process for exporters. Thank you very much for watching.